falling, 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 falling through the air, through the air. That's all I could think of as I fell down the rabbit hole. And now I suppose you're wondering how I happened to get into a rabbit hole. Well, it's really very simple. I was sitting in the garden and just beginning to doze off when all of a sudden a rabbit with pink eyes ran right alongside of me. Now, there's nothing very remarkable about that, but I did jump a little when I heard him say to himself, Oh dear, oh dear. I shall be very wait. I shall be terribly wait. Then he took a watch out of his waistcoat pocket and looked at it. Five o'clock. I'll never be there in time. Never. I jumped to my feet and followed him. He popped down a large hole under the hedge, and without even wondering how I was to get out again, I popped down after him. That's how I got into the rabbit hole. Down, 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 down. Falling through the air, through the air. Of course, this is all just a dream. It couldn't really happen. I couldn't be falling so far and a half so slowly. Will this fall never come to an end? Oh, it did. The fall was over and I wasn't hurt a bit. I looked around and there in front of me was a little table made of solid glass. There was a bottle on it with a label that said, Drink me. Drink me. Well, it doesn't seem to be marked poison, so I'll try it. Mmm, sort of a mixed flavor. Cherry tart, custard, pineapple, roast turkey, and um, hot buttered toast. Very nice. Oh, oh, what a curious feeling. Something's happening. I'm opening up like a telescope, growing taller and taller. And, oh, I'm getting much too tall, much. My feet are almost out of sight. Goodbye, feet. Who oh, put on your shoes and stockings for you now, poor feet? I'm sure I won't be able to. I'll be too far away. Well, I've stopped growing. Things are all very queer today. I don't be seem to be the same person at all. I wonder if I still know all the things I used to know. I'll try to say, how doth the little? Now, let me see. How doth the little crocodile improve his shining tail? And pour the waters of the Nile on every golden scale. How cheerfully he seems to grin, how neatly spreads his claws. And welcomes little fishes in with gently smiling jaws. I'm sure those aren't the right words. They don't sound like anything I've ever heard before. And I certainly don't look like I ever looked before. Why, well, I must be 10 or 11 or 50 feet high. Oh, there's the little white rabbit again. Oh, the Duchess, the Duchess. She'll be terribly angry if I've kept her waiting. She'll have me executed as sure as wabbits are wabbits. How do you do, Mr. Rabbit? Oh, oh, oh. Wait, uh, I won't hurt you. Don't run away. Oh. oh, dear. I suppose I've frightened him. Oh, Something's happening again. Curiouser and curiouser. I'm shutting up. I'm growing smaller and smaller. Oh, I'm sure I'm not going to like this. It might end in my going out altogether like a candle. Yes, here I go. I'm going out. I'm going out. Oh, my chin just hit my foot. <laughs> This growing larger and smaller went on for quite a while. One time I grew down until I was just three inches tall, or rather three inches small. I found myself underneath a mushroom. Standing on tiptoe, I peeped over the edge of the mushroom and looked straight into the eyes of a large blue caterpillar. He was sitting on the top with his arms folded, quietly smoking. Who are you? Well, I, I hardly know, Mr. Caterpillar. I was Alice when I got up this morning, but I think I've been changed several times since then. What do you mean by that? Explain yourself. I can't explain myself, sir, because I'm not myself, you see. I don't see. But being so many different sizes all in one day is very confusing. It isn't. Pardon? It isn't confusing. Oh, well, perhaps your feelings may be different. All I know, it's very queer to me. You, who are you? 
I think I'd better go. Goodbye. Wait, come back. I have something important to say. Yes? Keep your temper. Is that all? No. So you think you're changed, do you? I'm afraid I am, sir. I can't seem to remember things. What things? Well, I've tried to say how doth the little busy be, but it all came out quite differently. Repeat, you are old, Father William. Yes, sir. I'll try. You are old, Father William, the young man said, and your hair has become very white, and yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think at your age it is right? In my youth, Father William replied to his son, I feared it might injure the brain. But now that I'm perfectly sure I have none, why I do it again and again. You are old, said the youth, and your jaws are too weak for anything tougher than suet. Yet you finish the goose with the bones and the beak. Pray, how do you manage to do it? In my youth, said his father, I took to the law and argued each case with my wife. And the muscular strength which it gave to my jaw has lasted the rest of my life. You are old, said the youth, one could hardly suppose that your eye was as steady as ever. Yet you balance an eel on the end of your nose. What made you so awfully clever? I have answered two questions, and that is enough, said his father. Don't give yourself airs. Do you think I can listen all day to such stuff? Be off, or I'll kick you downstairs. The words are not right. Not quite right, I'm afraid. What size do you want to be? Pardon? What size? What size? Well, I should like to be a little larger, sir. Three inches is such a wretched height to be. It is a very good height indeed. I am exactly three inches high. Oh, I didn't mean any offense. I'm just not used to it. Oh, you'll get used to it in time. Go have a talk with the Duchess. What Duchess? The Duchess. Goodbye. With that, the caterpillar got down off the mushroom and crawled away. Well, I followed the caterpillar's advice and I went to have a talk with the Duchess. It turned out to be a very noisy conversation. The Duchess sat on a three-legged stool, bouncing a baby in her arms. The air was full of pepper and the baby howled and sneezed and sneezed and howled without even stopping for breath. Off in the corner, the cook was stirring a cauldron of soup and throwing pots and dishes at the Duchess and the baby. What you're doing? There goes the baby's precious nose. Well, we have a guest. Stop throwing pots. What do you want here? I beg your pardon, Duchess. Go away. Ch child, stop sneezing. I don't believe the child can help sneezing, Duchess. There's much too much pepper in the soup. Oh. If everyone minded her own business, the world would go around much faster. Quiet. Quiet, child, or I'll sing you a lullaby. Very well, then. Very well. Speak roughly to your little boy and beat him when he sneezes. He only does it to annoy because he knows it teases. Wah! 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 I speak severely to my boy. I beat him when he sneezes for he can thoroughly enjoy the pepper when he pleases. Wah! 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 I was very glad to leave that place, but perhaps I wouldn't have been if I'd known I was going to meet the Mad Hatter in the March Hare. The Hatter sold hats and wore one with a price tag on it. The March Hare was, well, as mad as a March Hare. They were having tea under the trees, and sitting between them, fast asleep, was a Dormouse. When they saw me coming, they jumped up to welcome me. No room, no room. No room, no room. Why, nonsense, there's plenty of room. I'll sit right here if you don't mind. Very well. I'm the Mad Hatter. 
Have some wine. Thank you, but I don't see any wine. You know why? There isn't any. Oh, then it wasn't very civil of you to offer it. It wasn't very civil of you to sit down without being invited. I'm the March Hare. How do you do? How do you do? I didn't know it was your table. It's laid for a great many more besides three. She's right, you know. But her hair needs cutting. Why, that's very rude. Oh, yes? Why is a raven like a writing desk? Oh, a riddle. Now we shall have some fun. Let me see. Wait. Why is a riddle... My watch has stopped. What day of the month is it, do you know? Why, uh, it's the 10th. Dear, dear, I'm two days slow. Two days slow? Yes, I told you the butter wouldn't suit the works. Well, it was the best butter. Yes, but some crumbs must have got in as well. You shouldn't have put it in with a bread knife. Well, it was the very best butter, you know. Here, here, look here. The Dormouse is asleep again. Wake up. Wake up, wake up, Dormouse. Here, pour some hot tea on his nose. That might help. Wake up, Dormouse. <laughs> Why, why, he's talking in his sleep. Don't pay any attention to him. Have you guessed the riddle yet? No, I give up. What's the answer? I haven't the slightest idea. But if you didn't know the answer yourself, why did you ask me? Uh, suppose we change the subject. I vote the Dormouse tell us a story. Yes, hurrah! Wake up, Dormouse. Wake up, wake up! Pinch him. Go ahead, pinch him. Wake up! I wasn't asleep. I heard every word you fellas were saying. A story, Dormouse. Tell us a story. Yes, please do. And hurry up about it or you'll be asleep before it's over. Once upon a time, there were three sisters. And their names were Elsie, Lacey, and Tilly. And they lived at the bottom of a well. At the bottom of a well? What did they live on? Uh, they lived on molasses. But they couldn't have done that, you know. They'd have been ill. So they were. Very ill. But why did quiet, they... Quiet, quiet, stupid. That's enough. I'm leaving. Wake up, Dormouse. Wake up. I said I'm leaving. Here, put the Dormouse in the teapot. Gentlemen, I'm leaving. Head first. In you go. Gentlemen. In you go, Dormouse. In you go. This is the stupidest tea party I was ever at in all my life. walking in a beautiful garden with bright flower beds and cool fountains all around when a very timid voice spoke up at my side. Hello. Oh, why, why, you're the little white rabbit. That's white. <laughs> Do you play croquet with the queen today? The queen? Well, I've never met the queen. Oh, everyone will be here, simply everyone. Really? Will the duchess come too? Oh, hush, hush, don't mention her name. She's under sentence of execution. Oh, dear, what for? Well, she boxed the queen's ears. The queen executes everyone who boxes her ears, you know. Off with his head! There they are now, the king and queen of hearts and all the court. Oh, but, but they just look like a pack of cards. Why, there's the ace and there's the knave. Off with his head! Now, my dear... Quiet! Not a word out of you. Not a word. I am the queen. But, my dear, I am the king. Quiet! Um, yes, dear. Who is this? Good afternoon, Your Majesty. I am the White Wabbit. Idiot! And who is this? What's your name, child? My name is Alice, so please, Your Majesty. Why should it please me? I don't like it. Well, I really don't care whether you like it or not. Impertinence! Off with her head! Off with her head! Nonsense! What's that? I said nonsense! Oh, consider, my dear, she's only a child. Mm -hmm. You play croquet, child? Oh, yes. Come on, then. Let the game begin. All the time we were playing, the queen never left off quarreling and shouting. Off with his head! Or sometimes... Off with her head! Till by an end of an hour or so, all the players except the king and queen and myself were under sentence of execution. Oh, that's enough. That's enough. The game is over. Tell me, child... Have you seen the mock turtle yet? No, I don't even know what a mock turtle is. It's the thing mock turtle soup is made from. Tell the griffin to take you to the mock turtle. Tell the mock turtle to tell you his history. Goodbye, I must go back and look after some executions I've ordered. The griffin took me to the mock turtle who was sitting on a rock on the beach. By the way, have you ever seen a griffin? Well, a griffin is half lion and half eagle and a very ferocious looking animal indeed. He spoke to the mock turtle. Hello, mock turtle. This here young lady, she wants for you to tell her your history. She do, she certainly do, she do, she do, she certainly do. She do. I'll tell it to her, but it's very sad. 
sit down. Thank you, sir. Once, once I was a real turtle. <laughs> He's a sad one. He certainly is. He is. He, is. he certainly is very sad. When we were little, we went to school in the sea. Oh. Now, now, now. Here, here. Oh. In the sea? Oh, go on, please. The master was an old turtle. We used to call him Tortoise. Why did you call him Tortoise if he wasn't one? Because he taught us. Don't be dull. I'm sorry. We had the best of educations. We had reeling and writhing, of course, with seography and drawling. The drawling master was an old conger eel. He taught us drawling and stretching and fainting in coils. What was that like? I can't show you. I'm too stiff. Well, uh, how many hours a day did you do lessons? Ten hours the first day, nine the second, and so on. Oh, what a curious plan. That's why they call lessons. Because they lesson from day to day. They certainly do, they do, they oh. do, they certainly do. They then do. on the eleventh day, it must have been a holiday. Of huh? course it was. And uh, how did you manage on the twelfth day? Eh? The twelfth day, how did you manage? That's enough about lessons. Now tell her about the games. The games? Yes, oh, tell her about oh, the games. Oh, the games. Yeah, there's the games, that's right. Tell her about the games. <laughs> Here, here, mock turtle. Same as if he had a bone in his throat. Come on now, buck up, old fella. There we are. Never mind the games. How about a song? Would you like for the mock turtle to sing you a little song? Oh, yes, please. Sing her turtle soup, will you, old fella? Very well, but it's rather touching, you know. Beautiful soup, so rich and green, waiting in a hot tureen. Who for such dainties would not stoop? Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Soup of the evening, beautiful soup, beautiful soup, beautiful soup, soup of the Come on! Wait! What trial is it? Come on! <laughs> Silence in the court! This trial, in the presence of their majesties, the King and Queen of Hearts, will now proceed. Silence! If there was any demonstration on the part of the spectators... Off with his head! Let the trial begin! Harold? Yes, Your Majesty? Sound the trumpet and read the accusation. Yes, Your Majesty. Uh, sorry, Your Majesty. <clears throat> the Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts, all on a summer day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole those tarts and took them quite away. Let the jury consider its verdict. No, 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 not yet, Your Majesty. There's a great deal to come before that. And call the first witness. Yes, Your Majesty. First witness, the Mad Hatter. Oh, yes, sir, right here, right here. Uh, what's your name? My name, my name, Your Majesty, well, is... Stop shaking. Mm -hmm. Take off your hat. My hat? Oh, it isn't my hat. Aha, uh -huh. stolen. I'll make a note of that. Oh, no, 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 I keep hats only to sell. I haven't any of my own. Give your evidence in a clear voice or I'll have you executed on the spot. Oh, I'm a poor man, Your Majesty, and I had just begun my tea not over a week ago, and what with the bread and butter getting so thin, and then on top of that, the March Hare said, he said... I didn't. You did. I deny it. He denies it. Uh, leave that out, leave that part out. Go on, go on, go on. Well, 
At any rate, the Dormouse said, he said... And then after that, I cut another piece of bread and butter. But what did the Dormouse say? That I can't remember. You must remember, or I'll have you executed. Oh, I'm a poor man, Your Majesty. You're a very poor speaker. You may go. Oh, yes, Your Majesty. And just take off his head outside. Harold, call the next witness. Yes, Your Majesty. <laughs> Oh, gracious. Uh, the next witness is... Ours! Ours! Did I say ours? Ours is the next witness. What do you know, Mike? Wait a minute. this court, you will please look up, not down. I'm sorry, Your Majesty, but I, I can't help it. I've been growing again. Growing? Again? Yes, sir. It happens to me. Sometimes I grow up, sometimes I grow down. Tell me, young lady, you have heard the accusation. What do you know about this business? Nothing. Nothing whatever? Nothing whatever. That's very important. Now, make a note of that. Your Majesty means unimportant, I think. Silence! Silence there. Silence! Rule 42. All persons more than a mile high to leave this court. Oh, dear. You have to weave, young lady. Come, come, please. But I'm not a mile high. You are nearly two miles high. Well, I won't go. Besides, that's not a regular rule. You invented it just now. I deny that. It's the oldest rule in the book. Then why isn't it number one? Jury, consider your verdict. No, no, no. There's more evidence to come, Your Majesty. This paper has just been picked up. What's in it? It is a set of verses written by the prisoner to... To somebody. Are they in the prisoner's handwriting? No, they're not. Then he must have imitated somebody else's hand. No, don't I went. That proves his guilt. The sentence of this court is that... Wait! It proves nothing of the sort. Why, you don't even know what the verses are about. Read them. Yes, sir. Oh, where shall I begin, Your Majesty? Begin at the beginning. Go on until you come to the end, then stop. Twas brilling and the slithy toes did gar and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the burrow goes and the mom raise our grave. Beware the jabber walk, my son. The jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jub jub bird and shun the from your bander snatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the manxome foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree and stood a while in thought. And as in a fish thought he stood, the jabber walked with eyes of flame, came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade went snicker snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, fragious day, kaloo, kaloo, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig, and the slithy toes the gyre and gimble in the wake. All mimsy were the borough ghost, and the mom raised out grave. And the mom raised out grave. Seems very pretty. But it's rather difficult to understand. No, no, that's the most important piece of evidence yet. Jury, consider your verdict. No, no, sentence first, verdict afterwards. Stuff and nonsense, the idea of having the sentence first. Hold your tongue. I won't. Off with her head. Oh, you wouldn't dare. Off with her head, off with her head. Who cares for you? You're nothing but a pack of cards. Off with her head. I screamed, it was because the whole pack of cards rose up into the air all at once and came flying down on me. Of course, it was only a dream. After all, white rabbits don't go around wearing coats. And there aren't any such things as mock turtles and griffins and mad hatters. And wouldn't it be strange to have a conversation with a caterpillar? <laughs> Yes, it was all just a dream, or was it? <laughs>